What actually is the meaning of life? By Devansh Agarwal. So I'm pretty sure many of you must have had this pertinent question. What is the meaning of life? I mean, why do I live? Why have I, what have I done to live? Is there any grand purpose or not? What kind of things am I expected to do in life? So, let's just get to the chase. The world is like a colossal labyrinth full of ironies. It is a place where you lose when you lose and you lose even when you win. Now stay with me to comprehend the meaning of life. What actually means a really sharp mind to comprehend the enormity of the above statement I just made. Once you see this through, then the question, how do I win in this grandeur and magnanimous fight of life? Everyone seems to be fighting in day and night rather seriously and painstakingly, won't pester you anymore. Then the right and the more prudent question to ask will be, is there a way through which I can come out of this battle altogether instead of fighting it in the first place? What I mean by it is that this is a battle where either winning or losing is not the eternal solution. We all are running in a race only to have more of everything. More money, more name, more fame, more respect, more happiness, more followers and so on. And somewhere in the pursuit of endlessly having more and more and more and more, death dawn upon us. Always keep this in mind. Your present situation, it's someone's dream to live. No matter how bad you think your present scenario is, if you are reading this or listening to this, then chances are that probably you at least have a roof over your head with three square healthy meals a day to fill your paunch with. This is still a fantasy for millions of people around the globe. For those people, you already are a billionaire. But you think you're poor at your own level of mind, probably because you're comparing yourselves to others or just simply have some expectations and desires to fulfill. So what is the solution then? Well, I'm sure most of you are about to leave, thinking it's a boring thing to pursue. And maybe you're probably right. Most of us are only interested to know how to get what we want as soon as possible in the easiest conceivable way without really putting in any extra energy or time, you know? We're not used to directing our boxed thinking into a topic like understanding the meaning of life. That sounds ancient. Everyone is living in this enormous illusion that if what they want the most miraculously comes into existence, then their lives will become awesome. What they don't foresee is that the mere solution to one thing becomes the very base of the next big problem in their lives. And what happens next? Well, we all know. Another desire to overcome that particular obstacle. And like this, the loop keeps on continuing 24-7. To sum our lives in one line, I'd say we were delusional before, we are delusional right now, and we will die delusional. Period. Might sound bitter, but it is actually the reality with so many of us. Now let me explain this to you in the simplest possible way I can. The universe is a giant ocean. Like I said before, that this is a race where you actually lose irrespective of whether you think you won or lost. I have given this example before and let me give it to you again. Try imagining the universe as a gigantic ocean, a vast ocean. There are billions and billions of waves in this ocean, trillions and trillions of water droplets. Now if you compare your body which you consider as your own self, with that of a wave, then 
Isn't every wave just living for itself at the end of the day? I mean, the wave can say that I'm also living for those tiny little waves emerging from me, but it is only saying so because, again, I, me, is involved. The wave may care about other waves only if they are, they are somehow associated with the wave itself in some way or another in the first place. So, ultimately, it won't be wrong to say that it is actually living only for itself. And the same is with all of us too. We can say that we live for our children or our parents or our families and friends, but you're doing that only because they are your own, they are yours. Everybody is living for themselves at the end of the day. You care about your friends and relationships because again, they are yours. Now in a normal ocean, waves don't fight off each other. But this universe is like an ocean where every wave is busy in contesting with each other. Every wave is busy becoming itself in making itself bigger and bigger, more stronger, more smarter, in order to engulf the smaller ones and emerge as the victorious ones. Is the world gonna change the way it is running? Probably not. I mean, ask yourself, if it comes to a choice to save your own family and a bunch of 200 other people you don't know, who would you choose? And let me tell you, this is not a movie going on where you can save both of them miraculously. So the point being, the very nature of this world is that everyone is living for themselves. Yes, I'm repeating it again and again because it's true. They all are thinking about themselves, myself included, making themselves more and more powerful by suppressing others directly or indirectly. How can anyone be truly joyful in such an environment. People can just show from the outside their smiling and happy faces, but from the inside, they're crying. And the more impressive part about this battle is that no one is actually carrying any kind of firearms or weapons here, which is what makes it even more dangerous than the real battles fought at the borders. Everybody is carrying flowers here and is trying to show how caring and loving they are. This is what makes it one hell of a treacherous war because we can't say for sure who is the real enemy here. Your enemies may have set their camps right under your nose and you wouldn't even know about it until it is too late. Like the Joker said, their morals, their codes, it's a bad joke dropped at the first sign of trouble. They are only as good as the world allows them to be. When the chips are down, these civilized people, they will eat each other. I mean, how true is that? Can these things stop happening all of a sudden? Well, of course not. It's impossible. So definitely, you gotta make yourself robust enough to live in this world if you even want to survive no questions about it. Robust in the sense that you must have an understanding of this ocean, the meaning of life. So stop squandering time. Our majority of time is spent in plain simple time pass instead of making ourselves a great warrior for this battle of life. Our time pass here is anything that is deteriorating your energy in any shape, size or form. If you are not learning from whatever is happening to you at the present moment, then that will all come under the radar of time pass. All the pleasures you indulged in. A person, after committing every sin in the rule book, looks to God for atonement. This is also what most of us do as they, get ex as they expect to get away with it. Now you gotta decide whether you wanna spend your time to be a fierce warrior or to get spoiled by the pleasures you keep running after. And let me tell you, escaping is not the solution. We all look for escapes. We all are experts at running away from our problems. But you can't escape them forever. 
because no matter where you go, you can't really escape this ocean. Remember, I told you the whole universe is an ocean. Wherever you escape to, there will be ocean. Since escaping is not the answer you were looking for, ideally, you should be investing your time in making yourself a brave warrior. You gotta make yourself so powerful and smart, then you wouldn't have to beg anyone to get anything in life. You gotta make yourself skilled enough to be deserving to get what you want and be intellectual enough so that you can smash through whatever obstacles come in your path. Okay, but hold on. Didn't I say at the starting that this is a war where you lose even when you win? So the bigger predicament here is whether being a warrior is the ultimate solution or not. Let's say you even become the best warrior ever born on the face of the earth. Does this mean that you are absolved of all the problems? I mean, you can get sick anytime. The people close to you can die anytime. Even you will die at some point or just any one of the 112 disastrous turns your life can take at any given moment. If you look closely, there are pros and cons to being a warrior and sometimes even not being a warrior also do the work. I mean, think about it. Who is the safest person in a war? It's people who aren't warriors. Because they can sit at the fences, but the real warriors are busy protecting and fighting for them. They are probably gonna be the last ones to face the music, but one doesn't escape the sorrow. It lies on both sides. Then the question should be, how to be free from the sorrow? Or back to our main question, the meaning of life. Well, broadening our understanding. That's the one-stop solution to everything and anything in our life. Only if one puts in all the time understanding whether he is a wave or the water in this vast ocean, that is the true meaning of life. If you are a wave, then a wave can never live a happy life. It might show it from the outside, it may brag about its size and power, but from the inside, it will, it will never be truly blissful. But hey, 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 what if you are the water? If you are water, then there is no way to make you sad. Because waves form and die, but the water? No, the water never dies. It is eternal. And think about it, what actually is the truth now? Wave or water? If one removes wave, I mean if one removes water from the wave, then where is the wave? In reality, there actually is no wave. Water is all there is. And even after seeing this truth, you will still continue to fight in the outside world because like I said, you lose if you fight and you definitely lose if you don't. But now, the key transformation will be that, after seeing this truth, the water will now act through an instrument called the wave, playing with the other waves in the ocean and expressing itself to its fullest which will make all the difference in the world. Now you will have the upper hand because you are playing with those who don't even know a single thing about the water, who believe that there, are, there is no water, just waves. You will always have an upper hand over those who haven't yet understood the real meaning of life. Life will become a game for you, where you will play not because you have any kind of greed to win or any fear to lose, but because it is in your very basic nature. You will rise above winnings or losings because you already know that you are the water, which is infinite. It doesn't matter whether you win or not in this game. Because now you know who you truly are and because you know your true self, you will play like nobody has ever before and it will be something worth watching. And what do you have to do now to see this truth? Do you have to stop fighting outside? Well, of course not. If you're fighting on the outside all your time, then you 
sure as hell can take out at least one hour of your time every day on this inquiry, who am I? You can know more about what I really mean by saying that you are the water. You can ask questions about this on your own. You know, spend some time on your own to ponder upon this. Because one who knows who he truly is will eventually know everything there is to know. Now let's come to the final takeaway. I don't know whether there is a huge grandiose plan set for us in the stars or whether we are mere puppets whose strings have already been pre-programmed by some supernatural power on the basis of which we are acting our entire lives. The point is that life has been given to us out of trillions and trillions of galaxies out there. We have already been bestowed with this stupendous gift called life. How does it matter whether we were destined to do something great or not? How does it matter whether we have any superior goals or purposes? How does it matter if we don't know the point of our lives? We have already got so freaking much that it doesn't make any sense to me that instead of enjoying each and every second of this precious gift, instead of being immensely grateful for everything the universe has done for us, instead of making this the greatest life anybody has ever lived, we are squandering time asking vague questions and even becoming morose on not being able to find our supposed ultimate purpose. Guys, for one, we are alive. And the cherry on top? We are goddamn homo sapiens. Do we really need anything else? Why not put that great intelligence of ours to some meaningful work, create some amazing shit and simply live according to our basic nature? Other animals, they do have a certain limit of what they can achieve. But humans? We have been perhaps the only species yet so advanced and forward that it keeps on surprising itself time and time again with what it can achieve. There literally is no end to what we can accomplish and to what extent can we push our boundaries. Why not keep up with that spirit and search ahead, playing our best games that we can? And if you're still looking for a purpose to live by or some ulterior and sophisticated meaning of life, I got one for you. Do something nobody has ever done before. Push the boundaries so freaking high, no one even dares to dream about beating it. Make something of yourself that the onlookers become flabbergasted and totally dumbstruck in awe of you. Do something that makes you say to yourself, you did it. And guys, always remember, just like Rumi said, you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. Thank you very much.